Hello, hello friends, it's David Cortiesco from the Arduino and you will see today I'm not at the normal place, I'm not at my shed, I actually made it to Torino where Arduino is going to celebrate Christmas tonight, I know it's not Christmas actually, exactly, it's Friday 13th, but anyway, we're going to make our Christmas party and one of the parts of the party is making an ugly sweater, I don't know if you're familiar with the tradition of ugly sweaters, but there's a whole bunch of them on the internet, there's all sorts of pictures with them like reindeer, Santa Claus, there's like the appropriate ones and the less appropriate ones. Anyway, in the spirit of the hour of, uh, hour of code, I have decided to make my own ugly sweater. And um, it's going to be interactive. <clears throat> it's going to have an Arduino, Nano Every, a button, and a ring of LEDs that I'm going to show you right now. So the, the parts that I have for me today, I will be using is a, a sweater. This blue sweater is ugly by itself. Um, I've made a nice thing. Uh, to decorate it, it's very pixelated, and the idea is that it will look good when I take a selfie. So it's going to be a selfie ugly sweater. And there is, an, of course, an Arduino Nano Every, as you can see there. Oh, let's move the camera. An LED ring, or multiple LED rings, <clears throat> some thread, and some needles, because I need to, to stitch this whole thing onto my sweater and a push button to change mode. So. Sorry for that. The um, thing is, like making this thing here, obviously, it takes more than one hour because I made it really large. So let me see. Let me show you how how I made it. Until, until the batteries run out in my camera. As you know, cameras, um, they are not designed to be photographing, sorry, for filming for like two hours, and I only had one battery. So when my camera ran out of batteries, I was also really late in the night, I, I had to stop filming, unfortunately. But you see the result is pretty good. Uh, as I said, I'm gonna be using an LED ring. This is in multiple rings. Uh, the external one has 24 LEDs and it goes down, 24, 16, 12, eight, and one in the center. And uh, these are NeoPixel uh, LEDs, and they can be connected. I made a small, beautiful trick here. So uh, basically, first uh, the LEDs in the external ring will be lit, then the, the one in the following ring, the next ring, the next ring, the final ring. So in total, there is one, two, three, four, and five rings. And I'm going to use a trick to write my software. And well, let me just show you the software. Um, I wrote the software uh, here for you to see. Um, I will share it on the notes in the, in the bottom of the sketch as, a, as an Arduino create code so you can access it and upload it directly from the internet. And this is a basic sketch and I created a bunch of stuff on it so that you can um, learn about it. So first of all, I'm going to plug the, the LED ring on pin number 20. As you know, all of the analog pins on every Arduino board can be used as digital pins. <clears throat> so analog zero becomes the following pin after the latest. So in Arduino Nano, the latest digital pin is a 13. So A0 is 14. So A7, um, A I think, has to be 20. So, uh, so there you have it. So I will connect things to pin 20. And um, I made <coughs> a couple of variables to, to simplify the interaction. Um, I'm going to have five rings. In this way, I can say light up the the outermost ring or the innermost ring or ring number three or whatever. Uh, each ring has a separate amount of LEDs, as you see here. There is going to be 14 animation steps. <coughs> this means I'm, I'm going to be having a, an animation, which is the how much light I'm going to be injecting into each one of the rings. This will allow, will allow me to make like a fading in, fading out kind of effect. Uh, and not just like lighting up independent uh, LEDs. And um, then here you see I made this operation just signify that I'm adding all of the LEDs 
is uh, 24 plus 16 is uh, 40, plus 20 is uh, uh, 60, plus 1, 61. So in total, they have I have 61 of these, which is quite a lot. Um, then on the setup, sorry, uh, first I have to declare uh, a NeoPixel string. And uh, in this case, uh, I'm going to consider everything as a single array of pixels. Um, I'm using the Adafruit NeoPixel library, which is uh, the most used library for, for uh, addressing NeoPixel LEDs. And um, then in setup, I only have to start up the system and clear up the strip, making sure that there is like no LEDs uh, lit on my array. This is just setting up the array, it's not actually showing anything out. And uh, here I have different functions. I have created a function that's called spiral on, and I will light up all of the LEDs one after the next, and the, the number as a parameter is the delay. There's also spiral off that will do the opposite way. There is a ring out that will be going from the center and out and make the lights go like, you know, light up the central ring and slowly all of the other rings following the animations that I have in the array. So it will start with 25%, then 50%, then 100% of the light and so on, and then go back. And here you have all of the different functions. There is ring in, ring out, and then different modes of the different functions and so on. So you can take a look at the code and, and see yourself what it does. The only thing I'm gonna do to this code is to add the possibility of using a button to change between modes. So when I'm wearing my sweater, I will not be able to reprogramming the thing. So what I will be doing is just to like press the button to change to the following mode and that's it. So let me just uh, change the code interactively. It's a bit of a mess because I don't have a microphone stand. So I have to like place a microphone on the desk. <coughs> okay, so now you will hear me not as loud as earlier, but let's see how we do this. First of all, besides including the other fruits library, I'm gonna include the edu intro library that will allow me doing all of these nice things uh, that we've, we've been seeing in uh, other examples. <clears throat> so here we go, include edwintro.h. And I'm gonna attach a button. So my button, btn, is going to be on the pin number two just to make it very simple. And what I will do here is that once I press the button, I will change to the next effect. So if btn dot press, then change to the next effect. So <clears throat> the effects right now, they, they are just declared as functions. So what I could do is a switch case that every time I press the button, it increases a number, and then I check the switch case to see which is the next effect available. For example, that's a way to go. So for doing that, I need a counter. So we'll just add here a new variable called int effect counter, start with zero, and then here, I just need to do effect counter plus plus. And here, uh, based on the effect counter, I will be then drawing the different effects. So I have to do switch. And let me just make a space, effect counter. And here I do case zero. I will do ring out, which is one effect. Break. Case one, I will do ring in, which is another effect. Case two, I will do two effects combined. I will do first ring out and then I will do ring in. And then case three, I will do spiral, uh, 
spiral on, I think it's the name of the effect, on the time between LEDs, and then spiral off. Break. So there is one thing that happens here, and it is that um, the button pressing, pressing detection is only happening once in the loop. It's not happening inside the operations. So uh, this is uh, complex because if I press the button here, then while this is happening, I will not detect the button press. So I have to like be accurate and press it. So let's first just make this work. And once we see this works, we'll see how to change it to make it better. So we'll just plug the Arduino board to my computer. But before that, I will just connect the, the LEDs. And one wire goes to brown. I will very briefly show you how it goes. One goes to five volts, and the other one goes to pin 20. So it is this simple, really. Let's see, I press solder the wires there, as you see, with power signaling and ground. Then I have to attach a button. Right now you see that the light is the light is flashing on me because it's running the previous effect that I I I put on it. This is uh, ring out. You see the different rings ring uh, light up upwards. I'm going to very quickly plug in the button. One has to go to ground and the other one has to go to pin number two. And I send my program to the board in a second. Make sure they have the right board and everything. Yes, everything is fine. Now we'll get the camera again and then point towards the circuit so you can see how it works. Okay. So let me just change and it's been uploaded and now it's on the board. So it starts by doing the ring out effect. So you see, let's get the camera. Wait. So right now you see the ring out effect. In theory, when I press the button, it makes a ring in effect. You see, it goes the other direction. If I time my button pressing right, I should be able of making it change the effect in and out. See now it's out, then it's in. Out, in. And if I press again, and I time it properly, I will manage to change the spiral. The problem is that the button is not detected all the time. You know, it's only detected at the end of the effect. So I have to be very accurate when pressing the button. So I change it. So this is something that needs to change, obviously. We need to figure out how to improve the code so that the button presses are detected all the time. So I'm going to spend the next couple of minutes uh, doing this code. I will not talk. So you can just uh, see me typing the code and I will probably accelerate it so it's easier for you to watch the video. So here we go. In essence, what I want to do is to detect button presses at other parts of the code. So I could just uh, make this into a function that we call detect button. And I can just make a function here. And I can call the take button from anywhere in my code. So that's the idea. So I will call it, for example, every time there is a delay somewhere in the code, I will call detect button. So we'll check whether the button has been pressed at that point. And this will increase by far the possibility of detecting that a button is pressed. So anywhere where there is a delay, we should be uh, using this so you have a delay here. Because otherwise, things happen almost immediately. But when there is a delay, it might be big enough to stop the detection. 
So let's just run this on the board again and see if this trick makes the magic of allowing us changing the effect. So by default, the board is gonna start with the out effect, and I'm gonna press the button, in effect, and I'm gonna press again, out and in, press again, spiral. Okay, so I made it work. There is still some small adjustments that need to be made, but that's cool. So the program kind of works now. It's really, really nice. And I'm just gonna show you the final idea how it's gonna look like. So this will be on top of it. You see, so my sweater will be shining nicer. I hope I will win Arduino's 2019's ugly sweater contest. So see you on the internet, internet people. Have a good time. Have a great Christmas or great holiday, whatever you celebrate. Bye.